So allegedly Starbucks sales have dipped. Um, so much so it's made Starbucks glitterati, Starbucks board, Starbucks shareholders very nervous. So they're now looking at ways to try to get them back up again. So they thought, you know what? The first thing to go is a CEO. We need to change the direction. Everything is going from there. And the real insight about it that I've been curious about is that allegedly the price of just the coffees is just too much now for people. Even the people who are addicted to Starbucks and shit, it's just gone up way too much. And it's just, you know, people nowadays, I guess, are basically saying, hey, I'd rather just make my coffee at home, especially with the proliferation of like, you know, um, what you call it, uh, Stanley's and all these sort of cups and shit people are using. I feel like nowadays, especially if I'm ever doing, if I'm ever, I'm going on my morning commute to work and stuff, I think I'm seeing, I'm not sure if guys, if you guys have realized the same thing, but I swear to God, I feel like maybe I'm noticing it more because I've got a Stanley, but I feel like nowadays I see way more people on the trains with their version of like a coffee cup or sometimes I see a, a woman or a guy with an actual mug from home or like a mug they travel with. They just drink it on the fucking platform. Then when the train comes, whatever left over, they spill and they put the rest in, they put the, the mug in their, in their bag and probably go use it when they go to work. I see way more people doing it. And even at work sometimes, the machine that we have, the coffee machine, it's get, it gets used way more than in the past. There's like a little queue forming around it. People are actually going to actually make coffee. That they, like they're looking forward to go make their coffee there. And I think a lot of workplaces, I remember I was working at some work, I forgot what workplace I was at. Maybe, oh, I think it might have been Verve, that ticketing company that went under. So fuck Verve, by the way. Um, I think it was Pollen too. His name is Comp Pollen. So fuck Pollen and I hope their founders are drowning in some swimming pool somewhere. But this company that I used to work for called Pollen, they had a coffee machine actually in their office, like a proper one. Like a Lavazza, I think it was a Lavazza, like an actual coffee machine that you get like a fucking coffee shop. So I'm sure um, a lot of companies have that too. So I'm sure those companies that had that are now having people just use those coffee machines and bring their own, like, I don't know, bring their own beans to grind. Because nowadays, um, there was actually some guy at work I used to work with who used to have, like, a machine that you grind beans with. It was, like, a little portable one. And I think it might have been USB-powered. And you literally put the beans in there. You press it down. It, it just keep pressing the top until it grinds everything. So, and obviously, there's that YouTuber guy. Um, who's that YouTuber guy? I think it's a white dude, really handsome dude with white hair, with like, with like, the, with like the, those clear designer sunglasses. Who's got a super popular um coffee um YouTube channel, and he gives people advice on what the best coffee is on the high street, what the best coffee beans are, how to roast your own coffee. Like, he goes super hard. So I'm sure there's a lot of coffee influencers who are probably pushing the message of like, yo, guys, you don't have to buy this shitty coffee from these stores. You can buy coffee from these places. You can import beans directly from fucking, you know, Bogota if you want. You don't have to fucking go and buy an overpriced coffee from these chain restaurants or these chain places. So that might be hurting them in the slightest. But let's actually check this article, courtesy of Sky News, that maybe it's going to give us more information about what's going on here. And I'm, of course, I'm going to opine as we continue. Starbucks is suddenly replaced its chief executive officer after the company suffered a bigger than ever expected sales drop. The coffee chain's board announced on Tuesday that Laxman Narashima, um, or sorry, how do you say that? Lax, Laxam, Laxim, no, Laxman Narasimhan. Ooh, I guess the person's Indian. Narasimham has departed the firm effective immediately. Um, it comes following a mounting pressure and speculation over the future of Mr. Narasimhan, um, who had been at the role for a year and a half. That's a short time, isn't it? God damn, one year and a half and you already got fired. Yoish. Last month, the firm reported the global sales had fallen by 3% during its third quarter. Yo, you get fired for a sales drop of 3%. It's brutal at the top, isn't it? Because 3% doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm imagining the money's a lot though, isn't it? 3% probably doesn't sound like a lot in, in percentages, but I'm assuming the money that 3% rep you know, represents is probably in the hundreds of millions. Um, along with the slumps in regions such as the US and Middle East, sales plunged by 14% in China. Okay, that's why he really got fired. He really got fired for that. 14% drop in China. You can't be having that. There's too many people in that place, or in that country, sorry, for you to have a 14% drop. Too many people commuting back and forth to work for you to have 40% drop. No, 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 we can't be having that. This decline has been blamed on a combination of weaker demand amid price rises and a boycott related to the war in Gaza. Oh, yeah, true. That's a good point. I don't, to be fair, I would argue that probably the price increase has more to do with people not buying their daily Starbucks as opposed, as opposed to people who are protesting um against the war in gaza and screaming free palestine i don't think they've had that much of an impact but i do think online especially <coughs> there is a bad connotations around starbucks whenever i see like a picture of like kim kardashian jumping out of a cyber truck and going to a starbucks it always seems to be that way i wonder if there's like a deal 
Because it always seems like whenever I see a picture of Kim Kardashian jumping out of a Starbucks, no, jumping out of a Cybertruck, she's always going to a Starbucks. I wonder if there's like a, if that's like a deal they've done all together. Well, regardless, when you read the comments, people are going ham on her. Oh my God, you're so greedy. Is there no, is there nothing you won't do for money? Think of the people in Gaza, blah, 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 blah. Like they go hard. So there is probably a lot of like pressure on that side of things. If you're a celebrity or an influencer, not to be seen drinking Starbucks uh, openly or talking about it as much as in the past. People before would be like creaming themselves over the menu changes and shit. But you don't really see a lot of like Starbucks fanaticism on the timeline as much as you did in the past. So maybe that did actually hurt them. Mr. Na Mr. Nara Simhan, previously chief executive of the multinational food conglomerate Rickett, had been under scrutiny over his lack of experience and in the restaurant factor. This guy actually looks like the presenter on ITV, the Nara Simhan. He, he, I forgot his name. He looks like an ITV presenter, or no, a Channel 4 presenter. That's his name. He looks like a Channel 4 presenter. Maybe they're related. It continues, despite spending months studying Starbucks business, including training as a barista, <laughs> rah, he even did undercover boss, you know? He even did undercover boss. Despite spending months studying Starbucks business, including training as a barista, he came under further pressure in May when his predecessor, Howard Schultz, published an open letter urging the chain to make improvements. There has been pressure from activist investors, Elliott Management, after it built a two billion stay, after it built after it built a two billion dollar stake and demanding changes in the firm. God damn it. The guy you replaced is telling you you need to make changes. The investment company as part of your board is telling you you need to make changes. He was getting pressure from all fronts. To be fair, it is kind of nice to see because usually most of these corporations and companies, whenever they run into trouble, the first people to go are the people on the sales floor. Regular baristas, regular coffee shop people who are just, you know, working and working a regular job for a minimum wage. Although I don't think that's true because I think Starbucks has improved their hourly wage. Even here in the UK, I think you can basically get a Starbucks job for maybe £10, £11 an hour, which is pretty good. I think in the US it might even be 20 So the per hourly wage for Starbucks is a lot. But still, most of the time, whenever companies are, you know, going through trouble and they have a sales dip, the first people to go are the ones that are lowest on the ladder. So it is quite nice to see a refreshing change where, no, they take out the head guy, the CEO, instead of going for the employees first. I'm sure the employees will get fired soon enough. We'll hear of like major cuts because that's, that's usually the first thing CEOs come in and do. It's kind of like, a, you know, you kind of, um, you streamline the business and you focus it. You streamline in all aspects. You shorten the menu, um, you streamline the staff, you automate some processes just to kind of get back into control and then you kind of go from there. So I'm sure a lot of the employees are probably been told to like, you know, don't make any plans, like don't plan a wedding, you know, <laughs> don't plan some backpacking trip through Southeast Asia because there might be some big changes coming. Melody Hobson, who has stepped down as chairman and lead at the company board as part of the shakeup and admitted to CNBC that she had begun pushing to have Mr. Narashim uh, um, replaced a couple of months ago. Mr. Nicole, who has also held senior position at major US um, food brands such as Taco Bell and Pizza Hut, will become the chief executive officer on the 9th of September. And this Mr. Nicole guy, right? This guy here has probably one of the best deals you've ever heard in your entire life. Courtesy of the Financial Times. Look at this. Look at this. Have you heard of this? Look at this. Courtesy of Financial Times. Starbucks' new chief executive. Starbucks' new chief executive officer is awarded a $113 million pay deal and remote office in Newport Beach. Must be fucking nice, isn't it? That's what they pay people at the very top. Which makes sense because if he comes in and does what he thinks he's going to do and actually does steady the ship and get the brand back out what's going to, they're going to make far more money then here's $113 million pay deal. You know what I mean? And obviously you'd imagine too, there's incentive tied to his deal too. So if the company does well, you do well. You get bonuses, all that malarkey. So as it continues here, it says, um, Starbucks has awarded um, its new chief executive officer, Brian Nickel, cash and stock potentially worth more than $100 million in one of the largest hiring packages in US corporate history and four times larger than the sign-on deal offered to his ousted predecessor. That is crazy. So that deal basically says that they think this guy is four times better than his predecessor. He's four times better than Narashim. Woo! That's got to hurt the ego, isn't it? That's got to hurt the ego. The guy they're replacing you with is four times better than you. I've always wondered that myself, like, in job... Because you, you never know in job interviews, right? When you go for a job interview, you never know if you're, like, one of the best candidates or one of the worst. You never know. You just go in and try and put make a good impression. 
But I wonder how helpful it would be to know and maybe to ease your ego and to kind of soothe your fucking dented pride if you actually found out, nah, the person actually got the job is like sick. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they've got like 10 years experience, five in senior management. They've got, you know, they've, I don't know, they know like four languages, blah, 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 blah. They live around the corner. I wonder if, if that would be helpful to a lot of us if we actually found out, okay, cool. The reason why you didn't get this job is because the person that got it was like proper suited for the job proper suited for it and you actually were one of the least experienced for the role but we gave you a chance because we thought your interview went well i wonder how beneficial that would be or is it better just to not know and just to get an email that says hey after care for consideration and after you know or now there's what they do when they send you an email they send you like four paragraphs like trying to make you feel better and then by the end of it, it's like you know we'll not be moving further with your with your fucking applications like bro i prefer when it's just like one line da 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 your application will not be moved forward. We're not moving forward with the application. Good luck on your fucking... Or well, even good luck. Regards and just move it. Because that whole thing about, oh, we're going to keep your thing on fire. Like, I wonder how many people actually out there in the world who've applied for a job, didn't get it, then got the email that said it didn't get the job, and that email said, oh, we're going to keep your thing on file. I wonder how many people actually get contacted from that. I bet you zero. I bet you zero. Zero people you know in real life have actually ever been contacted again after a company initially rejected them and said, oh yeah, we had your thing on record. I just wanted to check. Are you still unemployed? Do you still need money? Are you still poor? You still need help? <laughs> oh, I'll continue. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, if, if paid out in full, the package revealed in the regulatory filing on Wednesday would make Nickel one of the America's highest paid chief executives. The contract would be worth 130 million if he hits the target Starbucks has set out. Okay, cool. So it's 130 million, but I guess his base pay will probably be half, if not less than that. So he has a lot to do to make up the difference. But there's a lot of incentive there, you know? That's really incentive. Like, if you need someone to work hard, if you need someone to bust their ass, if you need someone to try every and anything under the sun to steady the ship, offer them 130 million, potentially, as a salary. Forget even like stocks and shit. This is a salary. Like, god damn. Um,. Starbucks named Nicole as its fourth boss. Wow. This is bad turnover, isn't it? Starbucks named Nicole as its fourth boss in less than three years on Tuesday after the surprise ousting of Chief Executive Laxman Narasimhan, the former Rickett and, Bank and Big Kister uh, Chief Executive. Nicole will arrive at Starbucks next month from burrito chain Chipotle Mexican Grill, where since 2018 he had made led a revival in his business and reputation after a series of food safety scares. Um, shares of Chipotle gained almost 800 percent during his term. Oh yeah, that's true. <coughs> a lot of people were saying bad things about Chipotle, in it. They were getting like sick. Or well, I guess there's a standard narrative with Chipotle: if you order too much, or if you mix shit and stuff, you end up getting sick, or you need to take, or, or you get the shits and stuff. So he did actually help, okay? Because now you don't hear people talk about that too much. So maybe this is the the, the right person for the job, especially considering his CV. To start, Nicole will receive ten million dollar cash bonus upfront and another seventy five million in equity grants designed to pay out over time to compensate him for bonuses and unvested stock he left behind at Chipotle. Wow. At that level, you get money for stock you left behind. Like, wow. At that high level, you can make any demand in it. Any demand. Um, annually, Nicole will earn $1.6 million in sh in salary, plus a target bonus worth more than $3.6 million, depending on how Starbucks performs. This is in addition to a long-term equity grant and an annual target value of $23 million to be paid out. The quote. The Starbucks board willingly um, willingness to pay such a high price is testament that the faith they have in Nicole, said Ben Silverman, the vice president of research at Variety, um, at Verity, sorry, an analytics firm. But he's going to have to prove that he's worth it because his annual compensation is almost 75% higher than that of his predecessor. Last year's Nicole total pay at Chipotle was $22.5 million, while the value of his unrealized gains from the past equity incentive grants was more than $82 million. The package from Starbucks comes with an unusual perk. An unusual perk. Nickel would not be required to move to Seattle headquarters. According to the filing, instead the company will establish a small remote office in Newport Beach, California, the city in which Nickel has moved to Portland headquarters from Denver, plus pay for his assistant of his choosing. Yo, they're going to build him his own office. 
They're going to build him his own office or hire or whatever, rent whatever, an office for him in a place that he only moved to because of his previous job. It's not even like that's his like family place that he lives at. He only lived there because the other company he was working at Chipotle had headquarters there. That's some crazy, crazy sick move. He's like, look, I've actually kind of liked this area now. I only came here for Chipotle, but I'm actually starting to fall in love with the area. I've joined the local golf club. My wife has got, um, what you call it, has got like a nice community of friends here. I'd rather not leave. So they're going to build him another office. <laughs> and he gets to pick the assistant of his choosing. That assistant, that's like a good job too, by the way. That's a fucking good job. Remote working for this guy in whatever, what, where is the place at? In Seattle, like, oh. What a fucking gig. Only five other executives um, were awarded that pay package worth more than 100 million in 2023, according to a joint report by Equala, a pay data company. Uh, the largest US company's revenue, such as contracts, Nicole's target annual remuneration. Da, da, da. So, with all that being said, with all that being said, the hardest thing about this for me is what he does. What do you do? Because if you believe the narrative out there that people aren't going to Starbucks because it's too expensive, what do you do? Do you simplify the menu? Even though part of Starbucks' appeal is the customization. Part of the reason why we love it is because you can go in there and ask for whatever milk you want, whatever sugar you want, however much amount of water, ice, whatever. You can customize your drink to your heart's content. Probably the customization options are probably the customization options are limitless to a certain extent. So that's one of your strengths. But I would imagine because a barista has to make it and there's no automated process, it probably takes too much time to make everyone's drink. And it probably increases when the Starbucks is at a very popular place, when it's in somewhere next to like a, like the Starbucks I used to always pass was the one in Liverpool Street. That's the one I probably went to the most, the one in Liverpool Street or the one in Old Street. And those ones are like in areas where there's a lot of like office buildings and shit. The one in Old Street is known as like Silicon Roundabout. It's like, it's a bit naff, but that's where a lot of startups are. The one in Liverpool Street is next to like the financial area of most of London, especially the cool side of things. So those Starbucks probably have the most foot traffic, but they also take longer to make drinks because there's so many people coming in and they all have their own. I'd imagine too, the more affluent the area, I'd, this is my, again, I'm throwing shit out the wall that I don't know anything about, but I'd imagine the more, where Starbucks are, if the more affluent an area Starbucks is in, the more likelihood there are to like have crazy combinations and very specific things, you know? So you have place, you have, um, you have uh, coffee shops in places where people demand a certain level of specificity. If you fuck it up, they're going to vote with their feet and go somewhere else. So there's a lot of pressure on the baristas to make sure they get the drinks right. Um, but you know, simplicity does breed consistency to some res in some respect. So if you do simplify the menu, if you do take away a lot of the options, and you limit it to like certain things and maybe you kind of like have options be like milk or something only or maybe sugars and that's maybe it and you, and you get rid of all the, all the other fruity drinks and shit maybe that simplifi simplification will help it because i have to be honest someone like myself who gets paralyzed i got i suffer from paralysis by analysis and i don't like too many options that's why i'm probably quite um what do you call it regimented and i have kind of a i love to have a routine i love to have like structure behind the things that i do and stuff i don't like to have an endless list of options i have to be honest every time i go to a starbucks i get kind of overwhelmed that's probably the reason why when i used to buy sh coffees from coffee shops i'd opt to go to a pret a manger because a pret a manger for me is a bit simple right it's either a filter coffee or the nicer coffee or the americano there's no like millions of different options and milks and shit. It's pretty basic what you want. Do you want the cheap coffee or do you want the fucking good coffee or the decent enough coffee? And that's basically it. And I think that simplification will make things far better going forward. But again, you're probably going to lose a lot of customers because a lot of those girls who like to drink their Starbucks kind of prefer it when they have limit unlimited options because it makes them feel special. That's probably part of the reason. So this guy has a lot of pressure on his head, has a lot of things to ruminate over. Um, will Starbucks in the future have what McDonald's have? My local McDonald's, and I'm sure most McDonald's around the world, have those massive screens, right? They have those massive flipping screens um, where you order most of your food at. And in the McDonald's near me, they only have like one till. They actually have only one till you can kind of order from. But the rest of it is made up of those screens that you kind of press a button for. And obviously you wait for your, your number to get called out, then they give you your food. So I wonder, will Starbucks do something like that in the future? Will there be loads of screens in Starbucks? 
who flipping knows either way it's going to be a fucking crazy time but i am happy to see i'm not going to lie because i remember back in the day when i used to go to work and shit and i'd be commuting i always get kind of annoyed when i'd see people like going to work and they'd be carrying their little fucking starbucks cup shaking like a little crack addict and i'd be like bruh Honestly, you could do yourself a big favor and actually get the day started off pretty well if you did decide to wake up maybe an hour, half an hour, a little bit earlier for, for work and make yourself a little coffee. Have a sit down on your chair, you know, browse social media on your phone, maybe open up the news app, maybe open a newspaper, maybe watch a YouTube video, maybe just sit there in silence and drink your fucking coffee and then go as opposed to like doing everything on the go. Everything has to be in a hurry. You have to carry like a transportable coffee cup. You have to carry transportable um, lunch fucking containers. Like you can't just sit and relax. I hate that shit. So I'm actually happy that most people now are starting to make the coffee at home because it means there's a lot more of us who are enjoying drinking our coffees at home, drinking them outside on the porch, drinking them on our balcony or just having some fun and just drinking it, you know, looking out the window and fucking, you know, being a fucking curtain twitcher i think that's a far better way to go but again what do i know absolutely nothing what do i know absolutely bloody nothing that's all i know absolutely nothing okay i'm sure some of you guys are aware i know nothing but i'm just letting you guys know that i know absolutely absolutely nothing